In this tutorial, I will show you what is the default state for each GPIO on the Raspberry Pi. You will also learn how to verify the default state for each pin by yourself. And finally, I will give you some best practices to avoid getting problems with those default states. So as a quick recap, here is the GPIO header on the Raspberry Pi 4, which is also valid for Raspberry Pi 3. Actually, Raspberry Pi 4B and Raspberry Pi 3B. So you have 40 pins here and you have the gray number. Okay, 1, 2, 3, etc. until 40. And then each pin has a function. Okay, so you have power pins, ground pins, etc. And what I'm going to talk about here are the GPIO pins. So everything that you can see in orange here. Okay, and I am going to use the number that you see on the orange part. Okay, so pin number three is actually GPIO number two. Okay, pin number um, 24 is GPIO number eight. Okay, so I'm not going to use the gray number, I'm going to use the orange number. And now I'm not going to make you wait further. So what is the default GPIO state uh, when you put them in input mode? Well, here is the default state. So for GPIOs that are numbered from 0 to 8, so everything from 0 to 8, the default state will be high. So when you read the pin just after you boot, you will get high, which corresponds to a voltage of 3.3 volts. And any GPIO from uh, 9 to 27 will be low or 0 volt. So for example here, GPIO 2, by default, you know that it's going to be high. If you go down, GPIO 17, you know it's going to be low by default. Now, to get those default, well, of course, there are some pull up and pull down resistors that are involved. And those are actually internal to the Raspberry Pi. OK, so you don't see them like this. You don't need to add anything. Those are internal to the Raspberry Pi. And well, the value of those pull up or pull down resistor is estimated at uh, 50 kilo ohm. I say estimated because we can't actually know the uh, exact value. Why is that? Because, well, the hardware of the Raspberry Pi actually is not open source. Okay, when we think about Raspberry Pi, we think about open source stuff, that everything is open source. But no, what is open source is kind of the software part you have on top. But the hardware itself is not open source and they don't give you that information. So this is basically an estimation made by some Raspberry Pi users, okay, who published that on the internet and pretty much everyone agrees on that uh, estimation. Okay, now that you have this information, when does actually the uh, default state apply? Because depending on what you do, you may uh, actually encounter this default state or not. So basically, the default state apply when you have those three steps. You boot the Raspberry Pi, and then you set a GPIO as input mode, and you read the GPIO state. So this is what you need in order to read the default state. Okay, so you boot, you set as input, and you read the state. But the default state will not apply or will be lost if you have any of those conditions. So if you have any external pull up or pull down register, well, the default state doesn't apply at all because the external register you're going to put is going to be stronger than the internal register and it's going to basically override any default state. Also, if you use the gpio.cleanup function, OK, I'm going to use the rpi.gpio module here with Python. So if you use the cleanup function, the cleanup function is going to kind of erase the default states for any pin. OK, so if you use GPIO cleanup, you need to reboot the Raspberry Pi in order to get the default state again. And also, if you have a GPIO that was previously configured as output and then you put it as input, well, the default state is also lost. So you can see it's very easy to lose the default state with things that you do in the code. All right. Now that you have this, let's actually go inside the Raspberry Pi to experiment a bit with some code so we can see how the uh, default state actually works. OK, now we are on the Raspberry Pi operating system and we're going to make some experimentations to better understand how to work with the default states for each uh, GPIO. So for this experimentation, I have plugged nothing on the Raspberry Pi. OK, the GPIO header is just empty. No push button, no external resistors, nothing. Now I have created here a Python program, so in tutorials here, 
default GPIO states.py and let's see what we have in that with nano. So basically this Python program is going to set all the GPIOs to input and read the state for all GPIOs. So that's the step we have seen before, okay? I have just boot the Raspberry Pi, we set all GPIOs to input and we read the state. So the default state should apply in that case. So very quickly here, we import the rpi.gpio module, which is a Python module. We set the mode to BCM so we can use the uh, actual GPIO numbers. Then I have a list with all the GPIOs. We use a for loop to go through that list and set all uh, the GPIOs to input mode with uh, input. And then we also use another for loop. And in this for loop, we do GPIO.input, which is going to read the state okay, for each GPIO. And at the end, we also clean up. Okay, we do GPIO cleanup, which is something you should do as a best practice whenever you use the uh, RPI.GPIO. Okay, so you clean up all the pins. So let's quit this and let's run the program. So Python 3, default GPIO state. And as you can see here, so one basically means high and zero means low. So we can verify what we had before on the slide, which is that for every GPIO up to eight, the default state would be high. For every GPIO from 9 to uh, 27 here, the default state is low or zero. Now let's run this again. And you can see now we have something different. Okay, now the state is high for every pin. Why is that? Because we are not in the three-step configuration we had before, which was that we boot the Raspberry Pi, we set the GPIO as input and reread the GPIO. Now we have, so we have previously run the program, we have used the GPIO cleanup function. So as you can see, the default state is not the same. The default state actually is kind of broken. So by running the same program twice, you can see we have different results. And now this is also the same if, for example, in the program you set a GPIO as output and then input, that's gonna mess up with the default state. So now that you have seen uh, that we have, so we have here the correct default state, and then as soon as we try to do stuff with GPIOs, the default state can change, and you may have different results when you run the same program different times. Okay, so maybe you don't want to have that kind of randomness in your programs. And now we're gonna see how to basically solve that so you can have a default state that you know is gonna be the same every time. So let's come back to um, our program here with Nano. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna directly ask the Raspberry Pi to put the internal register to pull up or pull down in the code. To do that, well, when you do actually gpio.setup, so you provide the GPIO number, and then the mode, which is input or output, so here we only are interested in input, you can add a third optional parameter, which is pull, up, down is equal to gpio.pud, uppercase, underscore, and then you can use up if you want all the GPIOs to have an internal pull-up resistor, or you can use pulled down if you want all the GPIOs to have a pull-down resistor, so the internal pull-down resistor. I'm going to save and quit this, and let's run. You can see now we have something different with the exception of uh, GPIO 2 and 3, as you can see here. So every GPIO now from uh, GPIO 4 to 27 has the state 0, so low by default, when you ask the Raspberry Pi to put the internal resistor as a pull-down resistor. Okay, so, but you can see it doesn't work for GPIO 2 and 3. Okay, if I run again, well, we have the same thing, okay? So it's gonna work from GPIO 4 to GPIO 27. Let's go to the code again, and let's try the other option, which is not put down, but put up. I'm gonna save and exit and run. And you can see here, every GPIO will have a high state because the internal register is now a pull-up register. 
Okay, so this option is actually one first good option. If you don't have external hardware to add, you can specify in the code right here if you want the internal resistor to act as a pull up or pull down. Okay, this will avoid you maybe to have random behavior or simply to have different results when you run the same program different times. And now, well, the second option is to actually not use the internal pull up or pull down resistor, but to add yourself an external pull up or pull down resistor. And this is actually the best option. So what you can do is to add yourself an external pull down or pull up resistor directly on your circuit. So for example, you can see this circuit. So we have a push button and an LED. We're gonna focus on the push button. So basically a push button, what you're gonna do is you're gonna set the mode uh, of the GPIO to input, and then you're gonna read from the button. So in this situation, you may experience the default state that we had uh, before in our program and in the results. What you can see here is that we have a pull down resistor. So basically you have one side of the push button, which is linked to power supply. The other side is uh, plugged to a GPIO. Okay, so the left side power supply, the right side GPIO. And you can also see that on the right side, we have a resistor. So this is a 10 kilo ohm resistor, which is connected to the ground. This will act as a pull down resistor, which means that if you don't press the button, so the default state of the button is going to be zero volt or low. And this is a much better way to do because simply the 10 kilo ohm resistor is much stronger than the 50 kilo ohm uh, resistor that you have as an internal resistor. So this is gonna completely override the internal resistor. Okay, for resistors, basically, the lower the value, the stronger the resistor. So 10 kilo is stronger than 50 kilo. And so when you do this on any GPIO, you can be sure that whatever you do in the code, with this setup, for example, you're gonna have a default state which is low. If you put the resistor as a pull-up, okay, on the side of the uh, power supply, the state is gonna be high by default when you don't press on the push button. Okay, so if you can actually use this, if you have the possibility to add an external pull-up or pull-down resistor, do so because that's gonna be much more robust and you won't get any random state when you run your program. If you liked this video, subscribe to get more tutorials like this in the future. Also, check out my online courses so you can learn Raspberry Pi step by step in an efficient way by practicing and directly going to the point. Links in the description. Alright, thank you for watching. See you in the next tutorial or in one of my courses.